At last Sunday's Mass, the Gospel reading was one of the more powerful passages from the Holy Bible. It was Matthew 25 verses 32 onwards and for those of you who aren't familiar with the Bible I would suggest that you look it up but I'll paraphrase it for you, I'll summarize it for you. It's the famous parable of the sheep and the goats in which it is described that Jesus, the King of Heaven, will separate the sheep from the goats. He'll place the sheep on his right hand side and the goats on his left hand side and then he'll turn around and he'll say to the sheep Blessed are you, you're welcome to the Kingdom of Heaven and you um, are blessed because when I was hungry you fed me, when I was thirsty you gave me drink, when I needed comforting you comforted me, when I was in prison, prison you visited me and so on and so forth. And the people on his right hand side will turn around and say to him, when did this ever happen? We don't recall ever visiting you in prison, we don't recall ever feeding you when you were hungry and so on and so forth. When did we do this, O Lord? And Jesus will explain to them, you did this whenever you turned to the lowest of the lowest of us all, to the poor, the downtrodden, the miserable, and you helped them. Any time you did that to any of them, you were doing it to me. And that's why you are blessed. And he'll turn around and to the goats on his left hand side, he will say something similar, but the opposite way. He'll say, I was hungry and you never fed me. I was thirsty, you never gave me any drink. I was in prison and you never visited me. And they'll turn around and say, when did that ever happen? That never happened. You never were in prison and we visited you. You never were hungry and we needed to feed you and so on. When did this happen? And he'll turn around and he'll say, whenever you ignored the hunger of one of your lowest fellow human beings, one of the most miserable, downtrodden souls, you did this to me. And he'll condemn them. And he'll send them to eternal suffering. And this is a pity, because without the latter, without this condemnation, without the whole punishment and reward thing built into it, it would have been a beautiful parable. It would have been a beautiful allegory in that it would kind of point out that there is no glory to be had in being ostentatious with your charity, in making a big song and dance about how you are being charitable, but how in actual fact every time you turn around and you do a kind deed to even the most supposedly insignificant person around you, you are making a real difference and you are making a real difference to the world and you are changing things for the better. That could have been the message. But instead, it became once again, as is so often the case in Christian mythology, a story about self-preservation, about aiming for one's own salvation, saving one's own soul, trying to please the King, because he's all-seeing and all-knowing. It is turned from this beautiful, beautiful parable that it could have been, into this nasty little thing where, because of this all-seeing, almost schizophrenic notion of this all-seeing eye that sees everything you do, it no longer becomes a matter of doing things for the sake of doing them. Because you feel 
in your gut that it's the right thing to do but it becomes about pleasing the master I see this particular parable as if I'm watching a great chef prepare a beautiful meal and just as he's finishing it off he unzips his fly and he urinates all over it it's a terrible terrible waste of a beautiful parable what a shame